today our lecture is in MIT 5101, that's the course code. Our course title is Computer Applications in Education. Um, my name is Dr. Rikandi, your lecturer in this unit. Um, the purpose of this course, it is to support us uh, to have ICT skills and knowledge and uh, that will enable us to be able to apply this in our practice as teachers as researchers. Remember you are doing this course at postgraduate level so you will be practicing in your field basically as a teacher you are also researchers uh, by the level you are studying and also you'll be expected to be take leadership in ICT either as a policy maker or in any other leadership capacity. So that uh, provides us uh, with a background of why we need this course. The next thing I want to ask to think about what is the what is this course? What does it contain? So the course has um, uh, the, the course has uh, various aspects, and uh, one of the aspects is to be able to enable us to understand uh, uh, how computers evolved, how computer technology evolved and uh, what has been the technological advancement in the society, in the sector, and specifically for us in our education sector. Um, another purpose of this course is to also understand uh, the various elements in a computer system. Uh, we shall highlight that as we analyze the uh, course and the specific topic we are going to cover. And also, you need also to have skills on how to use basic computer application. This will be more practical, and of course, with understanding of why we need these uh, skills, practical skills, and also understanding of concepts. We also need, more importantly, to illustrate the relevance of those applications, of that skill we are acquiring, of those competencies, what is their relevance in education. So that's why our course in the first place is not just computer applications, but computer applications in education. Um, again, we shall focus more on what are these current advancements. That's basically internet technologies and uh, what is their relevance in education, what are their implications. And we finally, we are going to see what are the best practices and uh, what are the issues of concern. What do we need to be careful about for us to effectively benefit from this course um, as professionals, as practitioners, as researchers. So that um, gives us a nutshell of what is the focus of the course. So in doing this, we shall be covering various topics in this course so that we are able to capture all those components. Um, one of the topics that we shall be looking at is uh, is, 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 is in um, introduction to computers, so we shall understand what a computer is, how it looks like, and note um, uh, we already have some literal, or it is expected, having studied ICT education at uh, your level, our level of bachelor's, you have some literal background, so you'll be expected to recap on this, to um, uh, re uh, recapture what you learned, how a computer works, so uh, from a technical Point. Um, the other topic we are going to look at is uh, what are the key components of a computer. That topic now will be on computer, hardware and software. Um, so how, what, how do they interact, how do they work to make the computer useful to human being. Um, the other topics now will relate, as uh, the course continues, will relate to specific computer applications. So they are selected computer applications or computer programs that we shall be studying and we are going to explore each of them from a theoretical aspect and practical aspect and how is the usefulness in our areas of application or our areas of use. So each of those topics include uh, the first one will be um, operating system. That will be the first application we are going to be learning as a topic and in this we shall be using Windows platform is an operating system. Um, then we shall move on to the next commonly used application, uh, that is word processing. 
and that's uh, when you say word processing is a collective term then we are going to choose within it within the topic we are going to choose a specific application that's our processor then we see how to use it how to apply it and it's relevant to us as educators or educational practitioners uh, the next topic will be on spreadsheets and we are going to focus on a specific program because spreadsheets are many we are going to use a widow based spreadsheet that is ms excel uh, the next one will be database management systems database management systems will help us to um, be able to understand how to manage data from the way you collect it from the way you organize it and how you make it usable or easily usable and again it should also be retrievable in future so we are going to use a database uh, uh, system uh, using windows our basic application in this case will be ms access the next application will be on presentation software which are basically used to allow you to uh, have a presentation for your audience you want to deliver a lecture some content you have some audience or so presentation software it implies it implies that you are presenting something to us an audience or to some audience with a specific focus and uh, for a specific purpose so it the software will facilitate you to make a presentation an enhanced presentation an effective presentation um, uh, the other applications that will be of our interest are internet-based applications or programs and we shall pick the most relevant one uh, of course there are so many internet technologies and programs so we are going to focus on some specific programs so that will inform mainly uh, most of our content studying each of those applications uh, which entails both the theoretical part and the practical part to add the end we shall have another topic on what are the best practices you as you use computers what should uh, you do or not do what are the do's and the don'ts what will support you to make effective use to be efficient in using those computers so those are what we shall call best practices so there are so many we shall highlight on the most um, common ones and then we shall have an assignment to explore or to reflect on other practices that could be necessary depending on your uh, context or what you are doing with computers uh, and our last part will be on what are the issues of concern or concern in using computers what we mean by issues of concern what could bring hindrances what could be a hard cap what could be a bottleneck that will focus mainly on ethical issues and and uh, mainly ethical issues and security issues so those are will be our key issues of concern and that will inform our course content and each of the topics we are going to cover so on the same um, as you can see here we have um, aspects um, that um, are on uh, drawing from the same as our course objective and it is based on these course objectives uh, like uh, the studying or explaining evolution of the computer technology and the advancement explaining the different units of a computer um, explaining computer software use of basic computer programs explaining and illustrating uh, the relevance of computers in education explaining and use of common internet technologies and identifying security issues and of course ethical issues so these uh, will form our course objectives or what we mean by course objectives what are our learning goals and from these goals it will be a guide uh, of what we are looking forward to in this course so it's very important to bear them in mind so that you have a clear focus that's what the course objectives helps us to do in the class uh, again it is from these course objectives that we shall also be able to evaluate ourselves to assess ourselves that brings us to the learning outcomes so by the end of the course what will you have to show as your new knowledge in how you understand maybe computer technologies how you understand to use certain applications and how you understand their specific purpose and how you can adapt that to new needs as a user so those will inform our learning 
outcomes, the course objective. So we shall use these objectives to evaluate, to assess ourselves, to see whether we have the right learning outcomes, which means these are the knowledge, skills, and of course attitudes in computer applications. And as I said, before we move on to a uh, specific, uh, to our introduction as part of our topic uh, one, I want us to remind ourselves, the level we are doing this course, we need to be more critical. We need to be more analytical because it's not a basic application at this level that you're doing your course as a master's student. It means you'll be leading how to use this. You'll be directing others. You'll be uh, using it for other purposes beyond the basic use and also supporting others. Um, either technically or otherwise, you will be guiding application of those. Huh? And therefore, you should be more analytical, more critical, and uh, assume a leadership role, assume you're a policy maker, assume you're an administrator in your school, assume you're a lead teacher for your subject, even if you're still teaching in the classroom. That will make you uh, focus more deeply on the content. So don't just look at it at service level. Of course, the content will guide us on the expectations on each of the topics. So I begin by introducing now our first topic, which we said we need to understand what are these computers, what do we do, and maybe why they are even relevant to the human being. So uh, going to the basic definition of a computer is basically an electronic device, and it is capable of accepting your low data, manipulating it, that is processing, and then it's able to output something, and what it outputs is information. So this path shows what computers do. If the, one of these is skipped, we must have data when using computers, we must have some form of manipulation, that's processing, and then information. So, and information is what becomes the output of a computer to us users. So if this path is not complete, then computers are just objects and they are not of use. Now, when we define computers, basing our definition just moving from electronic device to this process, uh, then we realize computer becomes what we shall be using from now onwards. We are looking at computer systems, not just a computer. So that will make us focus more on the uses of the computer and its relevance in what we do as professionals, as a society. So we move from the basic definition to seeing computers as a computer system that is able to accept some input, process or manipulate that, and then to make it information. So if data, we are going to be defining what's data. If data is not processed, it doesn't become, or it remains not meaningful or not fairly useful to us, or it doesn't make any contribution. So it's until we process it, through computing capabilities that it provides us uh, the output we want, it becomes uh, useful and of value. So what is data? What is uh, processing? What's information? So that we see what we do the, with the computer revolves around this. So when you talk of data, data refers to raw facts or figures that uh, we have gathered or we have collected or captured and then it is those low facts or figures that then we use or we selectively use to see whether it is necessary to process them with a name to get some output which is in form of information. So when you come to processing, is those manipulative processes. It could be basic analysis, it could be a computation, it could be organizing the data, sorting, so that it becomes more relevant to a specific purpose. Remember, you, could, you cannot be processing something without a focus. First, you have what is the data I have, and then what, for what purpose do I want, or what is the nature of output I'm looking forward to. That's what informs the nature of processing. Um, and it is in the processing that we are going to be using uh, each of the computer applications I said, and of course there are many other applications, but for the purpose of the course uh, scope, we are going to be focusing on a few applications. So you have processed now. So after processing, the computer also gives you the capability to output. What it, it outputs is information. 
information means we have more meaningful um, output that we have been able, after we have processed, that can inform decision making, that can inform our management processes. So it is uh, uh, information refers to data that has been processed to make it more meaningful for decision making and for specific uh, purposes, including managerial processes or other processes we have in organizations. So that's what computer does. So um, computers um, will be able to do this when we understand what is it composed of. It has six components, a computer system. We say it now we call it a computer system. So for a computer to be able to move from data to processing to information, it must have or you must provide all these components. They are the facilitators to make a computer work. So that means we need hardware. It's one of the basic components. Uh, these are the tangible parts of a computer. From the desktop you may have, uh, from the camera you may have, the digital camera you capture data with, the scanner, all those physical gadgets. And at this point, I need to draw your attention to, in today's world, when we mean computer hardware, we don't just mean a computer or a laptop you have around you, we mean any computing physical device, including the mobile phones we have today, the iPads you have, the uh, other data storage um, facilities we have like surface so any um, the cam digital cameras all those uh, physical devices that facilitate computing uh, hardware so it's not just the computer itself uh, because technology has advanced software is the second component software means these are program instructions that enable a computer to function so they have been developed and uh, in the next uh, few minutes, we are going to look at definition of computer software, categories of software, and what they do. And note that software is a collective term. When there are many, you just call it software, so you don't need to put an S. So when you mean software, we mean all elephant programs that are able to um, facilitate computer, execute uh, different tasks on, in the first place, have that platform to work. Uh, the next component is procedures. Pro procedures means a set of instructions that we follow. And basically, what are the steps you follow? That's what we mean uh, by procedure. When you want to do a task, when you want to have your title page, you type first the content, you highlight it, you bold. So those are the steps. If you want to save a document, I'm sure that's a basic thing you have done in your computer, even when you're writing your personal letters. What do you do? You start by opening the software, you type your letter, then you save it. So that's a procedure, the steps you follow when using a computer. So irrespective of the app you are using. Data, we already defined data, those low facts and figures that you have collected, that you have captured for purposes of serving you uh, uh, through the processing to output people, these are life where human beings. So remember, we have computers as physical objects. But then, computers to be a computer system, a computer to be useful, there has to be a human being behind. And uh, what does a human being do in this process as a component? So in the first place, human beings will create computers, the uh, computer engineers will do the hardware, computer programmers will do the software so they'll be creating the computing other computing components again it is the same people who use the computers so we are saying we cannot have a complete computing system without people either as users or as creators of those components the last component um the sixth component this one we call it an emergent component those who did computers like 20 years ago, they reached at fifth component, people. They didn't maybe focus on connectivity. But in today's computing, it cannot be complete without connectivity. It cannot be really fallible without connectivity. And uh, what we mean by connectivity is um, what is the, uh, the networking capabilities of computers? What uh, it refers to the networking capability of computers. Then we ask ourselves, what are the type of networks that we have? So 
we have the wide area network, that means um, like internet, regional networks that are more widespread or that connect different places which are geographically uh, not closely uh, located. That's wide area network, we call it one, W-A-N. Then we have local area network, that means we are uh, going to have network within a computer lab, within a literal uh, section, computers have connectivity. So, role of computers um, in the society, in organization. So, that brings us to the other aspect. So, we know now what computers is, or are, for that matter, and what makes them, then what is the role of computers? What is the role of computer system? And at this point, I use the term ICT to make that definition of a computer system more inclusive, meaning uh, information communication technologies. Uh, uh, we make that uh, computer system complete. So in the society, in organizations. Society means uh, the whole humanity, um, because whether you're in an organization in the first place, you are serving the society. Organizations means we have specific um, uh, organizations or firms that have uh, specific focus, specific goals that they want to achieve with computers. So there is the global aspect and then the organization which may have a specific mission. So the role of ICT. The role of ICT in the society um, means um, we have information systems and data processing. That means uh, this refers to information systems that have um, integrated capabilities. So information systems refers to use of computer in an integrated manner. So these are systems that integrate all processes in an organization to deliver a service. A good example, um, we are already users of the university MIS, for example, that's a part of information systems um, that brings all the processes together for you to be able to deliver a service. Personal computing is the next role. This means use of computers to do your personal uh, tasks, like you have your calendar, you are sending emails, you are doing your own content like self-study, so you'd use the computer, like Gmail, to send emails, you'd use the Google calendar, or your phone calendar, etc. Uh, we have Sans and Research, whereby you apply computers to um, uh, support you in sciences. For example, they are computing devices. Remember we said a computer is not just a standalone device, it could be embedded. So scientists are using embedded computing devices uh, to do experimentation. Uh, those who make medicine, engineers, aircraft engineers, so they could be using all those things um, in their science as they develop airplane or other automotive, automated gadgets that use computer-based system. So um, the science and research, also data analysts or researchers also analyze data, so we, they use computer applications. Uh, process control is another area of use. Uh, this is uh, where computers are used to control automated processes that are psychic and that are very um, specific to what they do. Uh, for example, you have a process control Today, in the hospitals, we have ICU units that are automated that move via a cycle. And uh, what we mean by a cycle, it means the feedback informs the input in the next level. So we move from the input to processing, then we output, and after that, we have some feedback mechanism that may serve as input. So that cyclic process, when it's automated, it becomes a process control, and we are able to use today ICT to make this process more uh, effective, including uh, we have some process control in some human beings who have automated heart pacers in hospitals, we have ICU. We have use of computers in education, we shall be focusing on that. We are using computers for e-learning, we are using computers to teach, that's one role. And the last component is ed, um, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence means the robotic capabilities, or meaning that computers can simulate human 
beings, either mechanically or through um, by doing sensory uh, functions. So when computers can do that, either through robotics or intelligence that imitate human senses, then that is a field of intelligence. Now, not that all these areas are collective. There are so many things you can do within each of those, and we shall be able to see what is your role in doing that. Uh, the next uh, thing that we want to focus on is classification of computers. Classification of computers. So, how do we classify computers? There are many categories. We can classify computers based on the purpose they serve, based on the data they manipulate by technology. And uh, so then we have five generations and on the basis of their size and capabilities, like we have mainframe, mainframe and microcomputers. So in each of those categories, there is much more we are going to do with that. And that will be part of the assignment I'll be giving. So you are required to and explore each of these components and uh, understand, for example, when we talk of computers as either analog or digital, if I talk about that, when you have digital computers, most of the computing gadgets we have today are obviously digital. Uh, earlier technologies was more analog and is rarely found and less in special cases today. But for digital, they deal with discrete data and uh, when they are discrete, it means that they don't follow or they don't monitor minute segments or units. Analog, they are able to graduate from uh, in a continuous manner, uh, like a continuous uh, variable, so that we are able to monitor uh, very minute changes. So analog today are only used in processes that require um, critical monitoring so that a small change uh, is, makes a lot of value in the process, like maybe uh, what does your heart piece operate? They may use analog. What does the IT system in the ICU use? It may use analog because a change in the patient oxygen level in the heart pace means a lot. So they need to see the very minute graduated changes. Unlike digital, when we don't have or we only need to use discrete values. So now, uh, before we end our lesson, um, I want to take you through something that will be part of your reflection and again, your assignment. Um, so this assignment will make us go deep into the content, especially in our area of education. So one of uh, part of the assignment, I want you to expound or to analyze um, the relevance of ICT in education. And in that assignment, as you analyze the relevance, you are looking at the specific, or you'll be able to identify specific areas of use of IT in education. So that is a discussion you can write in two pages because there are various sub-components, sub-areas where we use computers in education. So uh, you are expanding on that law. And it is in doing that that you are going to go into depth. So analyze uh, the use of computers in education and be specific to each area of use and give an illustration. Uh, the other part of the assignment, or the second part, I want you to analyze types of computers by technology. So I explore the five generations and uh, distinguish how one generation differs from the next. So as a guide to doing that assignment or getting generations, uh, make sure you have distinguishing characteristic from one generation to another what becomes different, and that's the way it will make meaning. And um, uh, finally, um, uh, we shall have uh, covered most of uh, the things, all, uh, all the items we wanted to cover in this topic. So those are your two items of, um, of, of assignment. So looking at um, application of computers in education in a critical manner. Uh, giving illustrations and examples, then analyzing computer generations. And uh, that brings us to the end of our lesson, and uh, uh, you can focus on those and we proceed uh, to look at the other topics. 
These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.